Here's an interesting problem. We have an acute angle theta, but we don't know its size. All we know is that the cosine of theta is 0 0.567. What's the sine of theta? Well, we could find the arc cosine of 0 0.567 and then take the sine of the resulting angle, but we're going to use the Pythagorean identity. If cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1, then we can isolate sine squared theta equals 1 minus cosine squared theta. When we take the square root of both sides, we get a form of the main trig equation that solved for the sine in terms of cosine. Very handy. So sine theta equals plus or minus 0 0.824. Hmm, plus or minus. We'll get this a lot when we solve problems with the Pythagorean identities, since we need to take square roots a lot. And it makes sense too. There are two angles on our unit circle that have a cosine of 0 0.567. But we're told that theta is acute, so we'll choose the positive value of 0 0.824 since theta must be in the first quadrant. It's easy to check our work. The squares of the cosine and sine should add up to 1. So if you know the cosine or sine of an angle, you can find the other using the main trig equation. We can manipulate the equation to isolate cosine instead of sine. These aren't new equations. They're the main equation after a bit of manipulation. We did this exact same thing back in TR-09. Given the length of two sides of a right triangle, find the other using the Pythagorean theorem. So once you know the cosine and sine, you can also find the secant and cosecant, which are just their reciprocals. And you can also find tangent and cotangent, since they're both just ratios involving the cosine and sine. So if we know cosine or sine, then we can find the other five trig function values. We'll need a little extra information about the angle to help us determine positive negative signs. In the previous example, we knew the sine function must be positive because we were told the angle was acute. So in actuality, knowing the cosine or sine plus a little more information about the angle will enable us to find all the trig function values. What might be more surprising is that given any trig function value, the other five can be found. Let's step through these a pair at a time. So, if given cosine or sine, we can find the other with the Pythagorean theorem, specifically with either of these two equations where the Pythagorean theorem is expressed in terms of either cosine or sine. From there, follow the arrows to determine the other function values. If given secant or cosecant, take its reciprocal to get the cosine or sine. Then you're back in familiar territory to use the techniques just discussed to find the others by following the arrows. If given tangent or cotangent, express it as a fraction. Consider the numerator and denominator of this fraction as sides of a right triangle, and use the Pythagorean theorem to find the hypotenuse. Then use Sokotoa to find the cosine and sine, and follow the arrows. If the cosecant of a non-acute angle is 2.63, what are the values of the other trig functions for this angle? Cosecant is 1 over sine, so sine is 1 over cosecant. 1 over 2.63 equals 0 0.380 to three decimal places. We know sine, so let's find cosine. Square root of 1 minus sine squared equals plus or minus 0 0.925. Hmm, plus or minus again. Usually, you'll be given a little extra information to help you eliminate one of the possibilities. In this case, we're told the angle is non-acute. Since the sine is positive, the cosine can't also be positive, or it would be in quadrant 1 with an acute angle. So the cosine must be negative, 0 0.925. So, given the cosecant, we quickly found sine, then cosine. Now we can easily determine the secant, tangent, and cotangent for the non-acute angle whose cosecant is 2.63. For a reflexive angle theta, we're told that the cotangent is 0 0.512. Find the values for the other five trig functions. When given tangent or cotangent, express it as a fraction. In this case, 0.512 can be expressed as 512 over 1,000, 
You can reduce if you want to. Everything will work out fine either way. Now we need to find the hypotenuse of the right triangle. Well, what triangle? Well, remember, cotangent is adjacent over opposite, and we have a fraction for cotangent. So let's draw a triangle, it doesn't have to be at a scale, with angle theta, and label the adjacent side 512 and the opposite side 1000 to match our adjacent over opposite fraction. Now use the Pythagorean theorem to find the hypotenuse, 1123. Well, we have all the ingredients for Sokotoa, but let's take one more look at the problem we were given. The angle is a reflex angle, which means its point is down here in quadrants 3 or 4. This means it has a negative sign. Since the cotangent is positive, and it's the ratio between cosine and sine, the cosine must also be negative. So let's change our triangle labels so adjacent and opposite are both negative. Now we can easily fill in all of the trig function values using Sokotoa and reciprocal identities. This should look familiar, we covered it back in TR-14, and we can check that we get back the cotangent value we were given. Let's do a few more proofs that use the identities we've covered so far, the reciprocal and Pythagorean identities. Prove that cosine theta equals secant theta minus tangent theta times sine theta. We'll simplify the right-hand side, since it looks the most complicated, until it's the same as the left-hand side. Well, it's time for one of those tips I've been mentioning. It's often helpful to convert everything into sine and cosine. So let's start by getting rid of the secant term by substituting its reciprocal identity 1 over cosine. The reason can be identity of secant. Now let's get rid of the tangent by replacing it with sine over cosine. The reason can be definition of tangent, or even tangent equals sine over cosine. So in the second term, we have sine theta over cosine theta times sine theta. This is the same as sine squared theta over cosine, so we'll write that, stating that we're collecting terms. Now we have two fractions with the same denominator, so we can combine the numerators to get 1 minus sine squared theta over cosine theta. From our Pythagorean identities, we know that since sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1, then 1 minus sine squared theta equals cosine squared theta. So we'll make this substitution by the Pythagorean identity of 1 minus sine squared theta. This leaves us with cosine squared theta over cosine theta, which cancels and simplifies to cosine theta, which is the right-hand side, so we've proven the identity as asked. Prove tangent squared theta times sine squared theta equals tangent squared theta minus sine squared theta. Well, if we transform the left-hand side, we'll need to end up with two terms, since the right-hand side has two terms. So a good strategy might be to replace tan squared theta on the left with its Pythagorean identity, secant squared theta minus 1, to give us two terms. So we have secant squared theta minus 1, all times sine squared theta. We can distribute the sine squared theta to each term in parenthesis to get sine squared theta times secant squared theta minus sine squared theta. Let's replace secant squared theta with its reciprocal identity, 1 over cosine squared theta. This all simplifies to tangent squared theta minus sine squared theta, which is the right-hand side of the identity we were asked to prove. Video TR-34X has some extra problems. In the next video, TR-35, we'll use conjugates in trig proofs.